Hi fellow dog fanciers, welcome back to a new video. Today's video is on a quite frequently requested topic among current and soon to be whippet owners and that is separation anxiety in whippets. We will also talk about our mindset as humans when it comes to our dogs because sometimes we tend to create bad habits without realizing and without wanting to do so of course. Tell me in the comment section do you have a dog with separation anxiety, did you manage to resolve it and how? Let's get into the video. Starting with a very obvious question, of course, are whippets prone to separation anxiety? Unfortunately, they are. Does this mean that every single whippet can get separation anxiety? Of course not, this is very individual. Whippets are very sensitive and are what I like to call Velcro dogs. They want to cuddle and be cuddled. They want to have company most of the time and they get extremely attached to their people. And if allowed, they will follow you everywhere. The kitchen, the bathroom, the bedroom, etc. And they will always do that if you let them. So what happens when they're so used to being around you and all of a sudden you you leave the house and there is no one else to keep them company. Separation anxiety. Imagine you let them follow you everywhere and all of a sudden you have to leave your home and they're not allowed to go with you. What do you think happens in your dog's mind then? Confusion, frustration and stress. You can't really explain to them that you'll be back in two hours or that you're not really allowed to take them with you to the office, so can you blame them for feeling the way they feel? Dogs with severe separation anxiety can also develop other behavioral issues such as fear from everything and anything that is not familiar and even aggression. In addition, when they're at this state, they can cry, scratch and even destroy items around your house. And all of these things can lead to other unpleasant consequences such as unhappy neighbors, angry landlord and a lot of bills for you to cover the destroyed furniture. Our first whippet, Daira, had separation anxiety. She hated to be left alone and when the whole family went somewhere outside with her and either of us went away and disappeared to grab something from the car, to get some food or even go to the bathroom, she was a ball of stress. How did we solve that? We got another whippet. When Lacey came home, Daira was a different dog. But I do understand that this is not a solution that is possible for everyone, so let's look into what else we can do. Let's talk a little bit about our mindsets and how our actions can create unwanted behavior in our dogs that later become bad habits that are very hard to change because bad habits are so much easier to create than good ones and so much harder to change. The Whippet is a very magical creature. Sometimes they manage to manipulate us, not on purpose of course, to do whatever they want, to give them all the love in the world, treats, constant attention. It can be very difficult to say no because they're such gentle dogs, there is something about them. If you have a whippet, you will know exactly what I mean. And because they are so sensitive, they tend to overreact and traumatize and this can be a very obvious process sometimes and in other cases it is not. All of a sudden they will be uncomfortable in a normal day-to-day -day situation just because of something that impressed them in a bad way the other day and you didn't pay attention to and all of a sudden now they associate this situation with something that is negative. So we pet them when they ask us to, we let them under the blankets, we allow them in the room when the door is closed and they ask to be let in. And this is all perfectly fine as long as we also set some boundaries and rules to even things up. 
Let me squeeze in an example here. In my room I have a walk-in closet with a very comfortable chair. Sometimes I just like to sit there when I need some time to focus and think or just when I need to chill in peace and quiet. Jamie knows where I am and she will always come and scratch at the door. And of course, I let her in. She stays in for a few minutes while she gets her cuddles and then I open the door and she leaves. This is a habit that I have created because the first time she has scratched on the door and tried to get in, I have allowed her and that has happened the second, the third, the fourth time and now she demands to enter every single time because I have allowed it and it is something very normal now. But, on the other hand, I work in my room, my job involves contact with customers over the phone, so the only whippet that is allowed to stay with me is Lacey because... because all Lacey needs is a bed and a blanket and she will just sleep. If any of the others are allowed to stay with me, at some point they will want to play, they will hear the rest playing downstairs and they will want to leave and join. If I'm not quick enough to open the door, they're going to whine and all of this is going to interrupt my work. So when they want to come in, it's a no and if someone sneaked in while the door was open, I just asked them to leave. Every once in a while, they will loudly demand access and I will just say no or simply ignore and they will go away. The point of this simple example is that I have created some boundaries and have shown the dogs that there are times where we can spend time together and where they're allowed in my personal space and other times when it's simply not. And so they will have to find something else to do or somewhere else to sleep. Here are some other examples of things that we shouldn't really be doing when we have a dog that is prone to separation anxiety. When we come home and the dogs are very excited to see us, what is our response? To answer back with the same amount of excitement and affection, right? Instead of doing that, we can ignore until they have calmed down to the point that they have almost forgotten that we've been missing and then reward with all the love and attention. If you want to teach them that you leaving the house is not a bad thing, a great thing even, just before you're about to leave, you can give a chew, chew toy, puzzle toy, anything that they love and that will keep them occupied for some time. Then they will associate your absence with something that is very positive. And when you're about to leave, don't make it a whole ritual of love, cuddles and you explaining to them that you'll be back in just a few hours. They don't really understand you for all they know. This is the moment that you're about to leave and also the moment for them to start being anxious. Just leave like it's not a big deal. Some dogs will even try to get in the bathroom with you. Don't allow them to. Just ignore such demands to avoid encouraging bad habits. Same goes for jumping on your lap while you're eating or while you're working on your laptop and they haven't been invited. The whole point of these simple examples is not just to set boundaries but to also create a mindset for you and your dog to start being accepting of the fact that there is a time and place for you sharing your personal space and to spend time together and there are other times when this will just not happen and it's not the end of the world, it's something that is completely normal. And don't worry, none of this will hurt your dog's feelings. Truth is that dogs don't really have the same perception of the surrounding world like us humans. If you have more than one dog, you will know that they don't always necessarily sleep together or play together. And if one enters the personal space of the other uninvited, they will make sure to let them know that this is not okay. And yes, they still love each other just as much. If you have a puppy, you have to set the rules since day one, just the same way you would do with everything else that is and isn't allowed around the house. 
If you have an adult dog with separation anxiety, you can slowly start introducing the rules one by one so that you can uh, little by little start replacing the bad habits with good ones and build confidence in your dog. So I hope this video was helpful. Separation anxiety in dogs is a very broad topic that can hardly be covered in a single video. Of course, for any questions and remarks, leave them in the comment section down below. If you want me to make a video on something that is very specific, I will definitely do that. Have a fantastic weekend and a lovely week afterwards and I will see you next week with a new video. Bye-bye!